We are preparing to kick off our 2021-2022 school year, but before we hop into our curriculum for the new year, I wanted to start with something a little bit more lighthearted, something fun to get us back into the routine of school, and so we are going to start with a unit study on sharks. It's Jess, the Homeschool Convert. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am so excited to share this shark unit study with you guys today and show you how I'm putting it together. I've done a farm unit study in the past and I showed it here and we just enjoyed that study so much. So I knew that before we jumped into our curriculum for the new year, I really wanted to do uh, just a week long unit study to get us back into the routine of school, back into the routine of uh, learning together. My niece Kira is actually staying with us right now and she is shark obsessed. And so this unit study was largely inspired by her. I knew I wanted to do a week long unit study of something. And so I was like, you're with us right now. What would you like to do? <laughs> you can learn along with this. And uh, of course she said sharks and or marine life of some sort. So we decided to go ahead and focus on sharks. And I have several different resources I'm excited to share with you. I'm still kind of figuring out how I'm pulling it all together. But if this is your first time here, welcome. I am so glad that you're here. As I said, my name is Jess and I started homeschooling due to the global pandemic. I never thought I would. And once I started, I just ended up falling in love with it. So here I am, I became the homeschool convert and I created this channel to connect with other homeschoolers as well as those who are interested in homeschooling and uh, to also just share information and encouragement. So if you are interested in those things, I would love if you stuck around, press that subscribe button introduce yourself in the comments if you are excited about this video please give it a thumbs up it really helps with my channel and it helps me know what kind of content you guys like but let's go ahead and start it and <laughs> get right into how we are doing this shark unit study so fortunately for me I chose probably the best time of the year to choose to do a shark unit study because right now as I've been planning this it is shark week. <laughs> I'm not trendy enough to know that that was going on, but because it's shark week, there are so many resources available right now. And so I found this from Bookshark. It's my shark week journal. If you're not familiar with Bookshark, they are a literature based curriculum. And I believe every now and then they offer just like these free little mini unit study text things. This is not sponsored by them. I literally found this through an Instagram ad <laughs> because it was shark week. And so this is the bulk of what we will be using as far as like our worksheets go and things of that nature. And then for my rising kindergartner, because I have a rising kindergartner, a rising second grader, and then my niece will be going into her freshman year of high school this year. Um, but for my rising kindergartner, I used, um, hold on, I forgot the name of it. <laughs> I used in allyoudo.net. She also had little shark unit study activities that were more on my youngest level. So some tracing activities as well as um, like pattern stuff and uh, let's see what else in here, letter stuff. And so I will leave both the book shark my shark week journal <laughs> link down below as well as uh the unit study from an all you do.net and actually for my rising second grader from an all you do.net they also had um, one for her grade level and so i was able to pull things like word searches from that and so uh yeah i just kind of pieced together the things that i thought would work best for my niece, all of her stuff came directly from Bookshark. She's gonna use pretty much all the sheets that came in the Bookshark thing. It makes it very, very easy for you to just pull books and pull resources. And on the Bookshark website, in fact, they even have book recommendations as well as documentary recommendations. And so definitely super helpful. So they each have their own little packet I put together. And then I also, from the Bookshark uh, unit study, I printed off this world map of sharks and then the sharks that go with them and so that's something that we're working on together i didn't feel like everybody needed necessarily to do map on their own and they also had these like open-ended shark figures and i think we're going to paint them with the younger ones and maybe create an ocean scene on construction paper or something like that and then they also had bookmarks and so there's some craft activities involved and just all sorts of neat things so that's a really really cool free resource. I didn't actually not utilize their book list because I couldn't get it to work on my phone. <laughs> I don't know why it wasn't loading for me, but just like I did with my farm unit study, I basically just did a library search and put a bunch of books on reserve 
and ended up with a whole stack. And so these are all shark reference books. I have more books coming, but these are the reference books I got to kind of dig through and see what I thought would be best kind of as a spine. And I think based on the ages of my kids, I'm gonna go with this DK Find Out Sharks. And so I feel like the pieces of information in here are laid out in a way that's really good for the ages of my two kids. But then I want to have these other ones on hand just to kind of strew and leave out and let them flip through it. Or maybe we'll pick a couple of specific charts and we'll use these other books to then kind of expand what we're learning. So I still need to get on paper exactly what we're gonna be doing each day. It's only like a four or five day study. So it's not like we're gonna have something super duper extensive, but just a fun little introduction to sharks. And so some of the other books I picked up for reference are this DK Sharkpedia, DK Sharks and Other Deadly Ocean Creatures, DK Eyewitness Shark, and this one should be good too. I love these eyewitness books. I just feel like the photographs are always really awesome and they're filled with great information. And then I have this National Geographic Kids, The Ultimate Book of Sharks. And so any of these I really feel like you could use as your spine. I think they're all really, really solid. So if you can get a hold of any of these at your library, if you're wanting to do one, any of them would work great. And then this is DK Super Shark Encyclopedia and Other Creatures of the Deep. These books always have such great photography. If nothing else, if we don't even read all these books, my girls just love to pick up books and flip through them and find a picture that is interesting to them and then ask me to read it to them. And so I just think there's going to be just great just to have on hand to do that with. And then this one isn't specific to sharks, but it's just a fun one that goes with ocean life and it's the big book of the blue i featured this uh, when i did a library haul recently and so there is i think a page on sharks in here that we can go through together but then there's also all yeah here it is there's also all sorts of other ocean creatures obviously and so i'll probably open this up one day and um look at the shark specifically and just leave it out again strew it so my girls can flip through it at their leisure and so those are the reference books like i said i'm pretty sure this will probably be the spine just because it's a little thinner, it's laid out a little bit more simply um, because I can't go through a whole encyclopedia this week, obviously. So we'll just use the encyclopedia as extra reference. And then I have several nonfiction picture books. We love picture books in this family. <laughs> we just love to read together. I've said that, said that over and over again. And so picture books, I think, take these concepts and just make them fun and engaging and approachable for kids. And so I have world's weirdest sharks if sharks disappeared swimming with sharks the daring discoveries of eugenie clark do you really want to meet a shark sharks biggest littlest sharks have six senses and so we'll probably read, I think that's six books, so we'll read two a day. And then on the fourth day, I wanna do a little side conversation about stingrays, because stingrays are cousins of sharks. And our zoo has a stingray exhibit where you can go and like feed them um, and interact a little bit. And so I thought that'd be a fun field trip to do. And I might do the aquarium as well if we can maybe go see sharks that way. But because I knew that my zoo has a stingray exhibit and I, my girls have been begging to go <laughs> do it I thought throwing stingrays in the last day would work well and so then I have I think they're both just called stingrays <laughs> they're two different books though so we'll do a little side thing with stingrays on the last day before we go to the zoo for our field trip so those are all my nonfiction picture books and then I have some fiction picture books because you know you gotta have some just fun fiction in there and so uh as always, I will leave every single book I mentioned, I mentioned linked down below um, to Amazon just because I know that's the easiest place to shop, but I also always have links um, to the other places I like to shop for books online. And please take advantage of your library. We always do. These are all library books that we're using. All right, so the first one is called Nugget and Fang, Friends Forever or Snack Time. <laughs> the next is Misunderstood Shark, Sea Creatures from the Sky, Sean loves sharks, 
and let's see, I think that was four picture books, right? Yes. And then I have this book called Aquarium, and I liked this specifically for my rising kindergartner because it has no words. And so she already loves to just pick up books and make up stories anyway. And so when I saw this, I just thought this would be so fun for her to sit with and flip through and just make up her own little story about and read <laughs> to me or her sister. And so this one doesn't look like it like specifically has sharks in here. Maybe this is a shark. Perhaps that's a shark. <laughs> it's open-ended. Um, so yeah, she can just kind of sit and enjoy this and it'll go with the theme of it. And then the next book that I have is A First Book of the Sea by Nicola Davies. And this is a book of poems and we love incorporating poetry um, into our homeschool. And this is written by and illustrated by an author of two other books that I really enjoy. Those books I also mentioned in a recent library haul, uh, they're called Grow and Many. And I just love the way this author and this Illustrate collaborate together. The illustrations are always just so, so lovely. And I love the way um, their books are written and the way they're laid out. And so I, when I saw this at my library, I got so excited. I mean, this artist just does such a beautiful job. So we will have some sea-based poetry to include in our unit study. So we'll just flip through this. And I like um, the size of it because the pictures are so big, but then the poems are kind of short so we can get through, oh, I put it in the wrong spot. <laughs> we can get through several in a day. So I'm very much looking forward to doing that. And then I just have some readers over here. My um, niece, I found this book recently. I actually purchased this for her at, at the library. <laughs> they had like a section of books you could buy. It's called The Lion Tender. And obviously you can see the sharks and sea creatures. And my niece is a voracious reader. And so uh, she'll probably get through this <laughs> in that week. And if not, we'll finish it shortly after that. But this will tie in um, based on what we're studying. And then for my rising second grader, I have two easy reader type of things. Some of them, uh, this is a level three, so I'll have to flip through it. I think most of this she should be able to sound out if she doesn't know the words. Um, but I have uh, Discovery, I Am a Shark, and Step Into Readings, Stingray, Underwater Flyers. And so we can take a couple days with her reading these aloud to me, maybe do two days on each. And so these nonfiction easy readers though always have such really great information. And so I, I love that it can be something that she can read, but that she's just learning through it. So I have those two for my rising second grader and then something for me to read aloud. Um, it's just something short and sweet. It's Diving with Sharks and More True Stories of Extreme Adventures by National Geographic Kids. Now that I'm thinking about it, I may just read just the first one and do a chapter each day for the first three days and the last day, maybe do some type of craft or something or spend more time on our poetry instead. But uh, we'll get that figured out. I think I'll just do the sharks one though. And then of course I have some documentaries I'd like to watch. My niece picked out these two. I don't, I think this may be too advanced for my young ones. So my niece can watch these in the evening after they go to bed when she has her, her TV time because she loves to watch animal content anyway. Um, and so I have uh, Shark Water Extinction and uh, BBC Earth perfect shark for her to watch. And like I said, she actually picked those out. And then I still need to go through the Bookshark website and look at all their recommendations for documentaries. I'm trying to work smarter, not harder on this one, that's for sure. I love going to the library and pulling all these books and thumbing through them. I enjoy that so much. Um, but as far as like finding videos and stuff, I think having a pre-made list to pull from is going to be so helpful. So I'm not quite sure how many we'll watch. I'll probably pick out four or five. So we have one for every day of the week if we really want to, if they want to use that for their TV time or to watch while I'm cooking dinner or something like that, just so I have on hand like ones that I can already pull from. Whether or not we'll get through them all, don't really know. <laughs> I try to leave a little bit of room for flexibility when I do these unit studies, but yeah, I think that is everything I have for this Shark Week. If you have a good shark craft for me besides the... Oh, I have the painting things. That's right. <laughs> I forgot about that. If you have a craft besides <laughs> painting these sharks, though, please let me know so I can incorporate them or maybe a fun snack to do. I, I always like to incorporate food because we're foodies. And so if you have like a fun shark themed snack, that'd be neat. But finding these pre-made packets just has made my life so much easier. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the fact that they're free, I am all about that. And they're so good. They have such great sheets and information. They have things like book logs and um, documentary logs and note sheet or notebooking pages and all sorts of things. So please check out that link because if you are interested at all in doing a shark unit study, I think it'll be super, super helpful for your family. It definitely has been for mine. Okay, it is later on in the evening when I'm filming this, but I pulled out this, or I guess I printed it. It's my unit study days at a glance sheet. I will link this down in the description box. Uh, this is the same sheet that I used to plan my farm unit study week by week. And I got everything down on paper notes now so I know exactly how our shark week is going to go. So what I did was I started in this book and I flipped through it and designated the pages that we'll read out of those every day. And so I think every day it's 12 pages. And then I had my whole other stack of books and I assigned each of them on a day. And then I went through the Shark Week journals and the activities that I had and I assigned those to each day and like a hands-on activity each got assigned a day. And then at the bottom I have kind of the daily things that we're gonna do. So we'll read from a first book of the sea, which is the poetry book. We'll do a shark fact sheet, um, which they can use the encyclopedias for and the various other shark resources. Hopefully this is staying focused for y'all. <laughs> and then um, they'll do their book and documentary logs as, as well as just explore the extra shark books that we have. So I have it all down on paper now. It's not just in my head how we'll do it. I know how <laughs> it's going to work. So uh, yeah, again, this has just been so helpful to have these activities. And this is another free resource that's really helped me plan. And on the back, I just wrote down a few of the, the documentaries from the Bookshark website that I wanna make sure to check out. And then, here is part of my little library shelf and I have all the books organized. So on the left side, I have books that we'll be using more than once. Uh, the chapter book that my niece is gonna be reading won't necessarily stay here. She'll probably keep that in her room and just pretty much take it wherever she goes. That's what she does with her books when she reads them. And then the other resources that we'll be using daily or almost every day, um, like the two easy readers I'm splitting in half. So Kennedy will go through one two days and the second one the other two days. So those are up front. And then my nonfiction picture books are paired with my fiction picture books and they're paired by day. And then over here is just the extra resources that we can pull from. There are some shark sheets, ignore all the other <laughs> library stuff, but there are some shark fact sheets that they can fill out every single day. And so they can kind of do a deeper dive and do some more research as they want to in those or just in their spare time. I'm sure like once we get started with this kind of stuff, um, they tend to just get really excited about it. So I'm sure we'll use these books a ton just for kind of independent learning, but that is how I have everything set up. That is everything that I have. Let me know in the comments when you are starting school with your family. Uh, we're, ours is coming up pretty quick. <laughs> well, I'm so pumped about it. And so we'll do our, I think this is videos going up on a Friday. We'll start the following Monday on the shark unit study. And the plan is for the Monday after that to hop in to our curriculum. So uh, I am so pumped. <laughs> But uh, again, if you enjoyed this, give this video a thumbs up. And other than that, I hope you're having a fantastic day. And until I see you in the next one, the Lord bless you and keep you. Bye, guys.